All right. So let me say who I am. <laughs> My name is Catherine Larrer. Uh, I am a, a, a philosopher, uh, emeritus professor that is retired. Uh, emeritus professor at the University of Paris 1, Sorbonne. And um, uh, my, my expertise, my, my, my field of expertise is uh, environmental uh, philosophy, environmental ethics, environmental justice. So, uh, question uh, connected with uh, the environmental crisis and to the connection between facts and norms. And so maybe you were told that I would speak to you about environmental justice, which is what, what I am going to do, but on uh, focusing more uh, strictly on climate justice, which is a part of, of environmental justice. And uh, I, I, I chose that because, as you know, I hope uh, the, the, the COP26 is uh, currently being held in, in Glasgow in Scotland. So I'm going to, to, to speak of, of, of justice and, but you can ask a question when you want. Uh, no, you are not obliged to, to, to wait for me to have uh, finished. Uh, if there is something which is not clear, that you don't understand, or even that on which you strongly disagree, <laughs> you, are, you, you, you are perfectly allowed to, to, to raise questions and, and to, to give your advice. But uh, in any case, I'll let you time enough to, to ask questions. So, uh, what is, in general, environmental justice about? And from them, we'll go to, to climate justice. Let's say that environmental justice is about the connection between uh, the environmental or ecological uh, crisis and uh, social facts. Well, it, it can be said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, quoting uh, um, an uh, American philosopher, Dale Jamison, when he says that uh, there are environmental justice issues uh, everywhere uh, the poor suffer disproportionately from the environmental pollution and destruction produced by society at large and more specifically by the richest and the most powerful, be it nations or individuals. So environmental justice is about what is also called, uh, what, are, what is called uh, environmental inequalities I will uh, come back to that, but let's say that environmental inequalities are about the environmental dimension of social inequalities. So social, social justice plus uh, environment gives environmental justice. And there are all sorts of pollution, there are all sorts of destruction, and so today we will uh, focus more narrowly, but it's not really narrow, more strictly, let's say, uh, upon climate justice. Uh, that is, uh, with the normative question, which are related with climate change and with public policies facing climate change. So first, to understand climate justice, uh, we need uh, to have some contextual uh, elements. 
I think I'm, I'm uh, remind you, reminding you things you know very well, but it's useful to, 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 to speak more clearly afterwards. Well, first, of course, you know about climate change, climate change. Uh, that is, uh, climate change is a global phenomenon. Right? The, the first feature of, of climate change is its globality. Globality in the sense that greenhouse gas emitted from any point of the globe modify the whole atmosphere and this modification have impacts everywhere uh, in the world. There is no direct relation between the point of emission and the, 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 the consequence of the changement of the global atmosphere on this or that point of the world. So first, you, you find the, 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 the usual uh, ecological idea uh, that is that everything is interconnected and it is a case uh, in uh, climate change. But here, different from biodiversity problem, uh, climate change is uh, immediately a global phenomenon. So the, 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 second, uh, the second feature the second characteristic, that is, this global phenomenon requires uh, action at an international level. Uh, there, there were, it's not the first time that uh, all nations convene to discuss about uh, environmental uh, issues. So this goes back to, to the... Um, I have a problem translating French to English. Uh, uh, United Nations uh, Organization and its program for, for environment, which goes, which goes back to uh, 1972. But climate is the big global phenomenon which requires that all nations convene. Uh, to discuss from this point, and as it is now the case in uh, Glasgow with the, the ongoing uh, uh, climate conference. Uh, if we uh, look at the, the important dates in, uh, in climate change and, 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 and climate change governance, policies, regulating, trying to regulate climate change. Uh, two, two are uh, Im important. First, in, uh, in Brazil, uh, at the summit of the Earth in Rio de Janeiro in uh, 1992, uh, one of the, the outcome of the summit of the Earth was the United Framework Convention on Climate Change. That is one the statement, uh, a global and international statement about was what to be done to, to face climate change. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that uh, later. Uh, second, the IPCC, International uh, Panel on, on Climate Change uh, was created by international organization, um, United Nations organization being the, the, the one of them. Uh, IPCC was created, excuse me, in um, 1988. That is four years before the Earth Summit in, in Rio, and one year after the, 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 report, the, the report on our common, uh, common uh, future, uh, which was 
to, to introduce the, the Earth Summit of, of 1992. So, uh, from this, you, you may understand what COP, Conference of the Parties, mean. Do you know what it means? One of you can, can you tell me if you know it? What is, what does COP, why is it called so? Yes, go. Yeah, the, the conference of the party is basically all the signatories to the, the declaration meeting regularly. This one. All the parties to the, to the um, uh, UFCCC and some more <laughs> since, as you may know also, uh, the United States, for instance, did not s sign the, the, um, the convention. So, uh, from, from uh, the summit of Earth on, Conference are periodically held each year, alternating between North and South, to discuss and uh, transform the the the, the convention, the, the, the 1992 uh, convention, uh, to uh, what was the, 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 the principal one? Um, the, 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 the 1992 convention uh, gave no quantified prescription. They say that nation had to, to, to fight climate change, but they, 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 gave, they gave no specific uh, regulation. That was in uh, Kyoto in uh, 1997 that for the first time uh, specific regulation were uh, given but as you may know also but don't hesitate to interrupt me if you don't know this, this uh, obligation were meant only for the most developed countries. Uh, they, it, they were in the Annex 1 first, and other countries had no specific regulation to, to, to follow. The, 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 the Kyoto, and I, I'll, I'll go back to, to the, what kind of uh, agreement uh, was the, 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 the Kyoto agreement. Uh, the Kyoto Agreement was to be revised in uh, 2009 at Copenhagen and as you may know also, it failed. There was, of course, there was an agreement. You have no, no uh, uh, convention, no international uh, gathering without a statement, but this statement didn't say much. So, uh, Copenhagen wa wa was seen as a, as a failure and um, the next one was six years later in Paris at Le Bourget and it, it, uh, this time is, it was a success. There was an agreement, the, the, the Paris Agreement. And the current conference of the party, the current COP, is to reassess this agreement. We will come back to what is more precisely to, to, to be done and uh, uh, what question of justice does it raise. Uh, one ele element of, more element of, uh, conte of context to understand is uh, the, the, the reports of the, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, it, the, the IPCC uh, issues 
uh, reports very, very periodically. And the, the last one was issued by the first group of the IPCC on August the, the, the 9th. Um, and from almost the beginning, uh, the first report of IPCC was in uh, 1990. And at this time, it was not completely uh, certain that climate change had uh, an anthropic origin, but fairly, fairly certain. But uh, the last report, the one which was uh, issued on, on, on in last August, said that without any equivocy, climate change was man-made, was anthropogenic. Uh, so uh, enough for, for, for context, uh, for reminding you of, of uh, some, some important uh, points. And let's go to the next one. If uh, oh. okay, so this uh, this public st statement, this international statement, are mostly about facts, but there are some principles, and the first one to be uh, expressed uh, as soon as the, the, the first convention, uh, the, the, the 1992 convention, was uh, this one, uh, regulating uh, greenhouse gas emission according to the principle of common but differentiated responsibility and respective capabilities. This is the first principle of justice, I'll go back on, on this, and which was uh, expressed and in each agreement, in each statement, you find it again. So it is the, 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 main, the main important one. And if you take the, the, the Paris Agreement, for instance, you, you'll see it, this principle of common but differences, differentiated responsibility. I will go back to, to, to respective capabilities later. Uh, this, let's say common but differentiated uh, responsibility. You, you find it, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 times, maybe 12 times, it is repeated very often. So this is the, 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 the first principle of, of climate justice. I will go back to, to explain it. The second one, which speaks of climate justice, uh, I, I, I'll say and we'll see that it's more a political slogan. That is what uh, activists shout in, 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 in public demonstration. And uh, it is closely related to the North-South divide. So you have two, two references on, on, on climate justice. The official principle, formal official principle, common but uh, differentiated responsibility and the, how can I say that? Yes, the political claim, the political and activist claim of climate justice, for climate justice. And I, I'll try to, to show you that these are two different things, very, very different things. Um,
let's 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 begin by by the the the, the first uh, principle of of uh, equity of common but differentiated responsibility, which means that, as I told you, climate change is a global phenomenon, and nobody is out of it. No, no nation, no country is exterior to it. But, and it's all the difficulty, the principle acknowledges that this responsibility are differentiated. So it's the idea of what some sometimes said as um, a common destiny, something which is which is which which whole humanity is confronted to, but differently. So let's say that uh, Uh, let's say now, uh, 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 I will com come back to it. Let's say now that it is, as you, if you l read the, 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 the and, I, and I, I, I warn you, I advise you to read it. If you read the Paris, the, the Paris Agreement, you will see that enunciating the, 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 the principle of common but different responsibility, it's always with equity. So the, the question, as we and it is a very classical uh, uh, question in moral philosophy, the question is between the relation between equality and equity. We'll see what it is about. Um, climate justice, as I told you, climate justice, as I, as I told you, is. A, a, a political slogan. Uh, you, you can understand this thinking that you can come f to justice from two points, very opposite one. You can go, you can think about justice thinking the way uh, John Rawls uh, does in the theory of justice, asking yourself what is a well-ordered society? A well-ordered society is a just society, and these are the principles of, of justice in a well-ordered society. So you have sort of ideal, more or less ideal, scheme of what justice should be. You can come to justice, and the way the, the, the the British philosopher John Stuart Mill uh, comes to justice. You can come, you can come to justice from the opposite point of view. You can come to justice because you suffer from something you think is unjust, <coughs> and you say it's in unjust or it's unfair, and you think what should be, what justice should be, so that you could be fairly or justly treated. And it's not the case that between the ideal justice you imagine and the justice you think of to correct injustice, you have the same justice. It's rarely the case. That is why justice is a, a one of the reasons why uh, justice is a different it is a difficult question. So um, this is, as as I told you, uh, climate justice is something. It's a claim. It's a claim from people who think they are unjustly, they are unfairly treated. But it's also a concern of. Uh, political persons, uh, of politicians, or of uh, uh, public uh, person. And then the, the, the definition of, of, of uh, climate justice is, as I told you uh, at the beginning, related to social issues. And so um, I, I'm here quoting the 
euh, conseil environnemental et, et, et conseil euh, économique, social et envi environnemental, de Economical uh, Social and Environmental uh, Council, which is a, a French uh, council, and uh, which uh, which say gave, gave a, a definition of of climate justice that I give you. Climate justice is to do everything possible so that climate change or global warming does not increase social inequalities all over the world. So you have here the, the, the idea of environmental justice, as, as, as I told you, the connection between social, issue, social issues and, and, and environmental issues, and the idea there that, that adding to the, let's say, technical problem of mitigating a greenhouse gas emission or adapting to the transform situation, adding to this rather technical problem, what should, what must we do to 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 uh, have uh, less uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission, etc. Adding to that a social concern. This regulation of, of, of uh, climate uh, change should not have, should not increase inequalities. Or as we will see, this is often the case. So here is the, the, the problem of climate justice as a problem of uh, social justice. And um, so I, I quoted the, the the CSE, and, and you have also uh, Henry Shu. Henry Shu is an uh, American and is uh, now in, in Oxford, but uh, it's an American philosopher, uh, more philosopher. And he, uh, he himself uh, defines uh, climate justice. How can we limit the danger, the danger resulting from climate change without driving additional in hundreds of millions of people into poverty. So climate justice is about the social consequences, the social impacts of public policy regulating climate change. Uh, once this said, so if I, if I sum up, Two, two different perspectives on, on, on uh, justice and climate. The, the principle of common but differentiated uh, responsibility first, and then climate justice as negate, avoiding social unequal consequence of the fight against climate change. So now we can see that these two principles may be uh, applied, may be uh, followed on three different possibilities. First, when, when I, 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 come back, I come back, if I come back to the principle of uh, uh, common but differentiated responsibility. What does responsibility mean? We have two meanings of responsibility, and especially in, uh, in, in, in uh, environmental issues. First, responsibility is about the past. Responsibility is about attributing a fact to somebody. The, who did that? It, it answers the, the question, who did that? So you have responsibility for the past, and the question, as we will see, is who is responsible in the past for climate change? But, and especially, uh, as I said, in, in environmental issues, where the question is to look in the future, is to 
better, if possible, the, 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 the future uh, environmental solution, uh, situation. The problem is you have a responsibility for things to come. If you, if I, if I uh, go in, in this classroom, for instance, and if I ask who is responsible of the quietness, the order in this room, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean what was done before. But who is in charge of ensuring quiet or what, what, what you like? So there is also a responsibility for the future. And as we will see, the, the, the principle of uh, common but differentiated responsibility is mostly about what is to be done. It is mostly, hence, this, this idea of common but differentiated responsibility. It's the, the problem, how are we to attribute, uh, how are we to distribute the tasks, the burden of facing climate change according to common responsibility, but great differences. So if you want, the, the, the first principle, the, the, the principle of, uh, um, of common but differentiated responsibility is mainly a problem of distributive justice. How, how is the burden of facing climate change to be distributed? And it's the reason why it, oh, people sp speak of fairness, because justice as fairness, as uh, John Rawls said, is justice as a principle of distribution. Uh, the third issues we will see after that is that it in something which is not which was not there at the beginning at the beginning of the the discussion about uh, climate and uh, and climate regulation and climate justice. It is the question of human rights. At the beginning, the 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 the, the climate re regulation were not a matter of human rights, because people think that, so that it was a matter of climate, of nature, but more and more, and, and in a way we will go, we will see, it became a, a question of human rights. So we are going to, 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 to follow these three issues. What about responsibility for the past? And we'll see that this is the main problem of climate justice. Second, <coughs> What is, it, what is it about distributing the task, the burden? And this is about the, pro the problem of common but differentiated responsibility. And then we will see how and why it was judged to be not enough, and how and why climate justice was made into a problem of human rights. So. Uh, ha, uh, to, 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 to present to you the, the, the problem of responsibility of past emission, I, I've uh, chosen uh, 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 a quotation from uh, John Bird Calicut. Uh, John Bird Calicut is, uh, uh, do you know him? It, he is an uh, uh, environmental philosopher. Uh, that is, he, he, he deals mostly with uh, uh, problem of nature, intrinsic value, ecocentric value, things like that. But environment becoming more and more global, he, he, he began to, to, to think about also uh, social and, and human issues. And I think that his um, summary, his way to, 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 to show what is climate justice about and environmental justice about more generally is uh, uh, quite good. Uh, you, you can read it. It's, it's okay. So 
climate, global climate change will not be felt equally by all members of the present generation. People living in low-lying deltas, such as the, of the Gange and on the Oceanic atolls, will suffer disproportionately, first from more incidental uh, flooding and saltwater <coughs> intrusion, and fina finally eviction as sea level uh, rise uh, and storm surges intensify. Uh, people living in almost all tropical and temperate coastal areas will suffer from the increased frequency, etc., etc. Indigenous people uh, go uh, until lower latitude. You have here elaborated what I told you when I, 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 I said that there are environmental justice, uh, what is environmental justice uh, Essex is all about. There are environmental justice and climatic, climate justice problem everywhere where people suffer disproportionately from a, a situation created by so, so society at large or humanity as a whole. Uh, it, it's a way to, to speak. Do, so climate change is a, is a common problem, but some suffer more than others. And some suffer more, more than others um, regarding climate change is a matter of geography in, in, in um, people uh, um, in low-lying deltas, the, 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 the sea rise, the sea rise is particularly f felt in, in, uh, uh, in countries uh, near the level of sea, but also, so the one, when Calicut uh, wrote that, it was in the uh, 2009 more or less, yes, I think, uh, 2010, let's say. Um, and the tropical region were more, suffered more, more from, the, from clim climate change, that model, uh, temperate region, that Europe, or, or, or things like that. But it's also a matter of poverty, uh, both nationally and personally, uh, since those who are the most vulnerable to those uh, climate change uh, harms are those who are, who are the poorer and who, are, who have less uh, means to, to, to face, for instance, uh, the rise of, of the sea. When the, the sea will rise, and it's uh, already rising, when the sea will rise in the Netherlands, people of the Netherlands are used and are rich enough to face the rise of the sea. It's much more difficult for poor countries and in poor countries for poor people in these poor countries. This is the first level of inequalities. Those what is called uh, environmental inequalities, those who are the, the poorest, the, m the most vulnerable, the less resilient, are those who suffer disproportionately from uh, climate change. And the second aspect com comes now, adding insult to injury. Those least responsible for generating greenhouse gas, living in non industrialized co society, will suffer on average more than those living in industrialized society who are most responsible. The, the, the second level of injustice that Calicut say adding insult to injustice uh, is that those who suffer the most are those who have the, less, the least contributed to the church. Those who suffer the most are those whose ecological imprint is the smaller. So it's sort of a double 
injustice, first inequalities, and then uh, non-responsibility, if I, if I can say so. Um, so, the conclusion, such injustice demands redress, redress and that's what environmental justice ethics is all about. And what, that's what climate demonstration on climate justice are asking for. Justice, the idea, and it was the main idea at the, uh, at the beginning of the climate change uh, crisis, let's say in the, in the 90, 1990 and at the beginning of, 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 of the 2000, that the idea, the idea that climate, just, climate change was made by industrialist countries and it was not the, the business of, of, of poor country. And so poor countries were asking for redress, that is, a correct, not a distributive justice, a corrective justice. They, they, they were suffering for something they had not done. So they were protesting. Did it work? So when you come from climate justice, which is mostly about the question, who is responsible for the cl climate change? And you go to the second principle, which is how can, are we going to distribute the task? The idea, and I am uh, uh, quoting another philosopher who is a, a, a specialist of, of climate ethics, Stephen Gardiner, um, which is in the uh, University of uh, Washington, uh, Washington State. Um, it, the, the, the answer seems simple. Those responsible in the past, the, the, the country of the north or the developed countries, should be responsible to correct, to regulate climate crisis. You, you can say, if you, if you seek, speak of uh, principle, that uh, this is uh, uh, what is called uh, the polluter pays principle. Those who are responsible for the present pollution, the climate change pollution, are those who should pay for that. And this is what uh, Stephen Gardiner says. There is a surprising convergence of philosophical writers on the subject. They are virtually uh, unanimous in their conclusion that the developed countries should take the lead role in bearing the costs of climate change, while the less developed countries should be allowed to increase emission for the foreseeable future. That, that seems fair, logical. You, d you did it, you pay for it. And you, you, you see now uh, what was the Kyoto Protocol about, why in the Kyoto Protocol only the more developed countries had obligation of emitting less, of uh, in emitting less and helping the, the, the South to develop without emitting too much. So uh, you have here uh, the, the, the list of the Annex 1. So you see USA, uh, Europe, uh, Japan, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Norway. They are the one to take the lead in cutting emission, while the less developed countries would pursue their own development and take significant action in the future. So it's the beginning of, of, of uh, climate, climate negotiation and the idea that Things are, are, are not equal between uh, poor countries and rich countries, between south and north, and that it must have consequence in the way 
as I tell you, the tasks are distributed. So the, 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 you have one ap application of the common but of the common but differentiated responsibility principle. But it did not last. It did not go that way. Uh, and one of the reasons of uh, the, the, the Copenhagen uh, COP was to, uh, to write a, a, a new protocol, a new agreement. What changed? So Copenhagen uh, 2009, uh, first from, from uh, 1990, 1990, excuse me, uh, 1992, when, when uh, with the, 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 Rio, the summit of the Earth in Rio, to the beginning of the, 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 the 2000, the, the situation changed because of emerging countries. When, when uh, at, the, at the first uh, conven convention uh, in, in, uh, in Rio in 19, uh, 1992, the, mo the, the, the most emitting uh, country was the USA, the USA then Europe, then Australia, or the, 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 the lands, the countries you saw. But at the beginning of the, of the 20, 21st century, things have changed. You had a new, the, the so-called emerging countries, that is more than developing, uh, emitted as much or more even than, uh, than the, 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 the old developed countries. Uh, the BRICS, it's Brazil, Russia. Russia will no longer be there after that, but Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So it, it makes a, a word. And China, uh, at the beginning of the uh, 21st century, was and still is the the most the 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 the, the, the country emitting the, the most greenhouse gas. So you cannot say there are on, on one hand the rich country, on the other hand the poor country and the rich country much pay for the poor because because it's it's not so clear. And uh, you'll see that the things are uh, uh, more and more uh, controversial and, 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 and difficult. So, uh, as the situation was blurred, uh, the, the, the divide was blurred by, by, by the, the uh, ongoing, uh, the emerging countries, uh, there was a big controversy on about historical responsibility. And because what I told you, and none of you protested, uh, what I told you was that the industrial country were responsible for the emission of, of uh, yes, <laughs> it looks uh, evident, but <coughs> obvious. But it is not, they said. They said, yes. They said those who were uh, criticizing, you will see who uh, uh, later. Those who were criticism, criticizing the idea that the, the country of the nurse were, were responsible said, yes, they are causally responsible. That is true that the greenhouse this gas emitted by factories and, and, and so on and so forth, were the cause of growing uh, CO2 in the air. But they were not morally responsible. Why? Because, as you know, uh, 
we are now suffering from uh, uh, heat, uh, uh, climate change, uh, which begins in the 19th century. So those who in the 19th century were building factories, uh, were burning coal, petroleum, and, and, and all sorts of fossil energy, they did not know what they were doing. They did not know that they were emitting gases which uh, later uh, and so on and so forth. So you cannot be responsible for something you are ignorant of and something that nobody knows. You know that it was only on the, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century that the phenomenon of, of uh, uh, Arrhenius, uh, the phenomenon of uh, greenhouses, gases was explained by Arrhenius, but the other scientists were, 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 did not agree that they, they, they were controversial about what he said. So how can you be responsible for something you have not you have done without knowing what you were doing and without any mean to, 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 to understand what you are doing. And they, they were, those who were criticizing uh, uh, social historical responsibility were going on saying, and now we, we are living and knowing, but we can do nothing for, for, for destroying what was done before. So we are not responsible. And you see that this kind of, we are not responsible for what our forefathers did. And you see how this uh, sort of uh, uh, reasoning can uh, have effects when uh, China is uh, uh, a bigger, emits emits bigger, bi uh, more, more than, than USA. It is to say, China is more responsible than USA, yes? Sorry, I'd like to comment on that. I just was looking for the data, just to be sure about uh, on the comment that the BRICS are the most important actors now emitting. I think that's quite controversial, especially, I mean, if you see it in, in absolute terms, it is true, but it's also true that China has uh, one billion population. So, around there? 1.3. Yeah, okay, so if you take it in carbon emission per capita, that is very obvious. Uh, like the US, Australia, uh, and the European Union are way above China, Latin America, and any other region of the world. That it, I agree with you, but I am uh, 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 arguments, okay. not the truth, but the way it was argued, and to, to argue to the point that some um, I have given you. In, in climate justice, Henry Shu, uh, whom I, I speak to you uh, about, the, he said that North are responsible and, 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 and poor should be uh, protected. But Olivier Godard, who is uh, very, very well known in France, uh, uh, economics in, in, in environmental issues, in his uh, book, uh, global uh, climate justice argues not only that you cannot, the, the North, let's say, is not morally responsible, but also that it is not, it is not causally responsible because uh, it's also, all, uh, the, I have difficulty with his argument, but his argument is, uh, is that it is once you are over the level of admissible emission that you can begin to count. And in this way, China is more responsible than. So let's say you, you can argue for, 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 <laughs> for years and years because, of course, as you did, there are answers 
to, to, to Godard uh, arguments. But that was so difficult that some philosophers, and I discussed the matter with him, some philosophers like uh, uh, Henry Shu said, let's say something else. Let's look for something else. Because we cannot be sure to, 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 to win the argument on, 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 on matter of, of uh, historical responsibility. So more or less, the, the matter of historical responsibility was dropped, which to my opinion is not a good thing. But look at the way in the preamble, in the beginning of the Paris Agreement, you have, as I said, as I told you uh, already, common but differential responsibility, you find that almost every line. I, I, I uh, exaggerate, but you find it many, many times. But you have one occurrence of climate justice in the whole Paris Agreement. It is in the preambule. And look at uh, how, it, how it occurs. Noting the importance of ensuring the integrity of all ecosystems, including ocean and the, protection, and the protection of biodiversity, recognized by some culture as mothers, and noting the importance for some of the concept of climate justice when taking action too. It, is, it, it has become a sort of cultural peculiarity. Some nations speak of climate justice. And we, res because we are just and, 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 and uh, uh, we, we agree with uh, diversity, we, we speak of it, but this is, this is no longer the main subject. This is a way of seeing climate justice as, as I said to you in the demonstration, responsibility for the past It's something which has been more or less dropped. So for the first point, um, however, I said you people dropped the, the question of, of, of uh, climate justice, not, not everyone. And you find it, uh, you find it, you find the, the reference to, 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 to historical responsibility in the, the, the concept of ecological depth. I've given that the, the, the definition of uh, ecological depth uh, given by John Martinez Allier, who is uh, an economist uh, now in, in Barcelona, where, where he leads a, a group of uh, inquiry and uh, address uh, the, uh, the environmental justice at last. So he's much in this question of, of, of responsibility of poor countries, of inequalities. But uh, you find also a reference to climate justice through ecological depth in the Pope uh, Francois encyclical, uh, Laudato Si. Uh, so th there is a memory uh, in, in, in very diverse uh, uh, texts or, or, or reflection of, of climate justice. It is not completely uh, forsaken, but it, it is no longer the, the, the main point. And another reference to, 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 to say that it is not completely forgotten is uh, once more uh, Henry Shue's uh, definition of what he, call, what he calls compound injustice. That is uh, when one injustice leads to the other one. Uh, how uh, colonization uh, had ecological consequence uh, which made what I told you, the present inequalities stronger. 
So it's not completely forgotten. But Henry Shu himself, as we will see, um, prefers now to see things otherwise. Let's say, the, let's see the, the I am too, too slow, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see the, the second point about uh, uh, distributive uh, justice as the, 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 the side of, uh, of uh, common but differentiated differentiated responsibility principle side. Uh, so, uh, how does the principle of common but differential responsibility apply to the Kyoto Protocol? Do you know the, 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 the change between the cap and trade uh, regulation to the INDC regulation? Yes or no? You are not obliged. What, what was the second one? INDC. Internationally, nationally determine determine contribution. So, you 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 know how the difference between Kyoto and and Paris on this point or not? Must I remind you a bit? So, uh, in the in the Kyoto Protocol, the idea was to uh, distribute the the the, the, the per to distribute permits of emission on the basis of the, the calculation of a global ceiling. You, 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 you calculate uh, what is the maximum of emission which can be emitted not to, 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 to worsen the crisis. And when you have, this is a cap, and, and when you have fixed the ceilings, you distribute the possibility, the permit of emission between countries. So globalizing and then distributing between countries. Generally, but it, it should uh, be long to explain uh, the idea that it is on the ba basis of equal allocation per capita. But equal allocation of permits per capita by persons, uh, suppose that uh, the situation is not too, too differentiated. Because if not, you give much to, to, this is a difference between equality and equity. That is equality, if you, let's say, you, you, want, you have to eat, people are, 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 are hungry and you, you want to, to distribute food. If you give to the big and the small, to the, the fat and the slim, the same quantity of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, food, it will not have the same results. So the idea of equity is about proportionality. Equal, but always taking into account uh, the difference. But, uh, so equal per capita allocation. But uh, the, the main idea was to fix a market price of carbon. Because then it could have, carbon should be uh, expensive enough so that people do not use too much uh, carbon. <coughs> to make a long story very short, I'd, I'll say, but if there are economists in, in, in this room, they may disagree. To make a very long story short, I will say that it didn't work. There is no common price of carbon. So in some way, the idea of, of Kyoto, which was at the, the market through allocating uh, uh, emission price, emission permi permits, could regulate the climate crisis, did not succeed. 
It doesn't mean that uh, economists uh, uh, does not still want to, 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 to fix a carbon price. But let's say that the, 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 the change was from cap and trade to I, so intention, intentionally, nationally determined contribution. Um, the, the principle, the idea was adopted at Copenhagen. That was uh, the, 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 the main contribution of Copenhagen, even though it, it, did not, it did not give anything at the moment. But it was the, uh, on this basis that uh, the, the nation convened in, uh, in Paris. So the, the, the huge work which was done before the, the, the Paris uh, uh, Convention, because of uh, uh, um, Fabius, uh, the French minister, but also because of the, the, the COP20 uh, in uh, South America, was to uh, make each country's state what they were intending to do in the way of emission, to say we, we, uh, we will reduce our emission to this level. So each country states commits itself to reducing its emission and say I will reduce to that. The, the, the results in, 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 two, uh, in two 2015, that was if you summed up all the, the, the determined contribution, you were much above the 2 degrees or 1.5 degrees. You were more or less in, in, two, in 2015 if you added, summed up all the, the, the national contribution to 3.7 degrees, which was much too much. And this is why Glasgow is now convening, to, so that to, 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 to assess the contribution of, of, of the different countries. This is what Glasgow is about now. And the, the other uh, matter of uh, issue of uh, negotiation at, at the Paris uh, Convention, uh, at the Paris uh, Convention, yes, was the idea of a green fund of made, contributed by, by rich country to help poor country to adapt. Uh, it did not work and it still doesn't work very much, but, but we can hope. That is the reason why most, that is the reason why uh, many, many people and all sorts of people, philosophers, uh, lawyers, politicians, uh, all kinds of persons thought that once uh, historical responsibility dropped, once common but different responsibility with uh, not very satisfying outcomes, there was to, to, to be a, a third issue on normative issues in, in climate change, which was the question of human rights. What is it about? Uh, at the beginning, as I told you, at the beginning of, of the climate negotiation, at the, the end of the 20th century and the beginning, the end of, and the beginning, the very beginning of, of uh, uh, 21st century. The idea, as I told you, was that 
uh, climate change was, a, was for the, 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 the contrary of the South, the idea that climate change was a problem of the North. It was historically a problem of the North, and it was still a problem of the North because it was a problem of overconception. The idea, it was because uh, there, were, there was too much consuming in, 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 in the North that everything was, was going awry. Uh, but what happened at the end of the 20th century, at the beginning of our century, is that people in the South go on still think that it's a, a problem of the North. But what was new is what that is that climate change was not some, was no longer something in the future. It was a presently a present event. The the, the effects of climate change were were being more and more uh, felt in everywhere in the world. And so the the question was not only how are we going to, to share the burden, how are we going to distribute the task? The question are how are we to suffer less from the impacts? And I, 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 I remind you that as we see, according to, to, to the reality of, of uh, uh, environmental uh, inequalities, those who suffer most of the impacts are those who are the, less, the least responsible for, for, for these impacts. And so people change from the, the principle of common but differentiated responsibility to what we can call the harm principle. The harm principle is a moral principle uh, in uh, utilitarian philosophy, but it doesn't matter, uh, and especially in John Stuart Mill's philosophy. But the idea that we, as human beings, have a moral obligation not to perform an act that causes harms to others. The idea of the harm principle, it, the, the John Sheldon Mills uh, idea of, of the harm principle is that the only reason that uh, a state or uh, a public authority may constrain people is that if what they is to prevent doing harm to others. And So philosophers, Henry Shu, and 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 more, still and still more, uh, another uh, moral philosopher, uh, specialist of uh, uh, climate change and environmental issues and climate justice, uh, was a British uh, philosopher, Simon Kenney, but he goes to the U.S. from time to time. And uh, he, he wrote a, a, a paper entitled Climate Change, Human R Rights and Moral Thresholds. And his, uh, he aimed at, at showing how climate change does harm to people and how it, it, it uh, puts, it jeopardizes, it puts into danger human rights, two, two uh, three kind of human rights, human rights to life, human rights to health, and human rights to subsistence. Uh, climate change uh, threatens the, 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 the life of people by, by directly, if they drown in a, in a hurricane or, or, or indirectly through uh, disease and things like that. So it's also a, a threat to health, 
we know and we have seen with the pandemic uh, that uh, climate change uh, makes uh, uh, health issues harder and also it, it, it makes uh, uh, food more difficult to, to, to produce. So it, it's climate change is a threat to basic human rights, uh, not rights to, 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 to commodity it's a, uh, or to amenities. It, it, so we have to, 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 to fight against uh, uh, climate change uh, because of uh, uh, human rights. And this, uh, excuse me, And uh, this had this this change in the way of of uh, of looking about uh, uh, of thinking of uh, uh, climate change and climate change justice and issues of justice related to climate change have uh, important effects on on the. On the contribution of civil society to 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 to, to the fight against uh, climate change, two two aspects. You have, you have all the demonstrations, the, the marches, because uh, people are, are 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 committed to 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 stop or to lessen something which harms people. So all the the, 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 the activists' commitments to 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 climate uh, to, to climate change uh, um, demonstration, and more important, still, to my opinion, um, is um, is that with. Let, let's go back to the, the change from cap and trades, regulating by, by a market of uh, permits of emission, to uh, IN, INDC, to nationally determined determine contribution. Many, and especially economists, many, many uh, academics or, or, or or let's say climate change uh, scholars uh, think that it was a bit a, a, a bad thing to go from uh, uh, Kyoto Protocol to Copenhagen and uh, Copenhagen and, and uh, Paris uh, prote uh, Protocol because in the in the, the Kyoto the, the the Kyoto Protocol you you re you rely on market and market is constraining. Whereas in the in the Paris Agreement, you have no obligation. The 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 each country's uh, states uh, hits their uh, obligation their commitments, but there is no world government to 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 to. Uh, to force them to do that, there is no no enforcement of, of this uh, contribution. But so some say, some and more economists mostly say, stupid people never people never do what they say they they will do, and uh, without any st sanction, w what can you do? But which is uh, important and what this economist uh, do not see is that as soon as states publicly say states that they will reduce their their emission they are liable to be attacked in, 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 in courts by civil society. You can uh, pursue the, 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 your state because 
the state did not do what it was, what they were committed to. And it's what happened in, uh, in two, 2015 uh, in the Netherlands with the NGO uh, Urgenda. And what happened in, in, uh, in France two years ago, for, since two years, with the, the, the Affaire du siècle, uh, the deal of the century, if you want to, to translate. And maybe you know that the French state was uh, uh, lost in the, in the, in the court uh, and was uh, uh, indicted uh, for having not done what uh, they had been committed to do. So the, 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 the Paris Agreement is a way for civil society to exert pressure upon states who uh, would do not respect their commitments. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite important to my opinion, that uh, this change in the, in the way of uh, regulating uh, the, the responsibility for, for public policies and from adding uh, human rights to, you know, that the two, the two aims of uh, uh, climate agreements are mitigation, emitting less, and adaptation, uh, transforming in a, in a transformed world. But so you have also uh, the the new issues of of uh, of human rights that you find in the also in the preamble of the of the Paris Agreement. Acknowledging that the climate change is a concern of humankind, parties should, when taking action to address climate change, respect, promote, and consider that their respective obligation on human rights, the right to health, uh, you have more rights than you had in, in uh, Henry Shu, uh, Simon Kenney proposition, the right to health, the right of indigenous peoples, which is a way of coming back to climate justice, local communities, migrants, children, persons with disabilities and people in vulnerable situations, and the right to development, as well as gender equality, empowerment of women, and intergenerational equality. So you see that putting human rights into the aims of, of climate regulation uh, 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 allows to, to take into, into account not only human rights in general, but also inequalities. It's a, it's a way by which uh, environmental in inequalities uh, find their way in the, in the regulation of, of, uh, of climate change. But it is written there does not mean, of course, that is applied. It is applied, but at least it is written there. And, and it, it's uh, uh, an important uh, issue. I am not very, very, very prone with intergenerational equity because but you have it also. I, I can answer on, on uh, question on intergenerational equality if you are uh, interested. But as uh, as I said, uh, this is an important transformation, important change in the, 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 the statements about uh, environmental crisis, uh, crisis and, uh, and, uh, and climate change to integrate the, the language of, of human rights. And uh, 
this uh, adds a third pillar of action uh, against climate change, uh, not only adaptation or mitigation adaptation, but mechanism for loss and damage, that is the possibility to compensate for, for damages. I will just end and then you will have time to, to, to pose questions with, uh, if you read French, uh, a book on, 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 on these uh, issues, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Um, Judith Rochefeld is a, is a lawyer, a lawyer in private law, but it doesn't matter. And she wrote this book, Justice for Climate, and uh, where she studies all this uh, court action, all, all this judiciary action in court, and uh, uh, especially she, she, she works uh, on, the, on the arguments which are used uh, by, the pro by prosecution as well as by defense in all uh, this uh, 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 climate change uh, judiciary uh, and what she what she shows studying the, the the argument of the parties in 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 the court is that uh, the argument of the those who prosecute uh, who ask, f who claim for justice, are not only arguments about individual concern, they are not only uh, arguments about their individual rights, they are not only saying that uh, climate change, no, 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 the lack of respect uh, of, uh, of uh, national uh, commitments do harm to me, but they are more and more arguing of the idea of common good, of community, of, and, and through this uh, uh, judiciary, uh, what is uh, coming out, what is emerging, is the, the idea that uh, civil society are taking, are reclaiming the common interest. There are those who can say what is the common interest in a matter of, as you know, uh, private and, and lobby and lobbied interest are too often prevailing. So, uh, to, 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 to ends of <laughs> some <laughs> hope, uh, which is sometimes difficult in those, uh, in those issues, I think that this uh, third issues in climate justice after so um, responsibility, corrective justice, responsibility for the past, distributive justice, distributing uh, the, the, the task, the burden, the, the, the issues of human rights, I think is, is, is quite, quite important in, in, uh, in the climate justice issues. So, uh, 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 I stop there, so that you have uh, time, I hope, time enough to, 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 to raise questions. Yes? Ah, le micro. The mic. Uh, so I just, I kind of wanted to like take off on the question of Francisco did, because not only do we have like a higher consumption per capita of CO2 in the Western world, also a lot of those CO2 is spent on consumption, while in the BRIC states it's more spent on infrastructure development and stuff like this. So for me this is like a very, uh, I know evident a thing that we will have to change our behavior in the West. There is no other way around this. And now you said we moved kind of, like we're moving away kind of from this idea of making the West like be responsible for the past. But I'm not sure, maybe we should make ourselves responsible, but kind of 
in this discussion, I feel like there should be a lot of emphasis on the awareness. Uh, speak, speak more slow slowly, please. Yes. There should <laughs> be a higher focus on the awareness that on the awareness that we need to change our lifestyle in the West and that this is going to be part of it. And I just wanted to know how much this is part of this discussion because I didn't really like feel it so far. Let me explain my, 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 my point of view. I agree with you, of course. We in the North, we have to change our way of living. But the, the question is, how is the, the, the question debated? And uh, so uh, it's very difficult, it seems very difficult for, for political leaders to understand what you, and all of you, I think, and, and me think obvious that we cannot go on living the same way and that uh, uh, technological uh, innovation are not enough. But uh, that what I tried to show you that how arguing happens and, and what are the, the arguments and how, where, where things uh, go on and where things go back. Um, and you know that uh, in the Paris Agreement, um, the, 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 be it in the French uh, uh, version, copy or in the English one, uh, the, 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 the word oil, you cannot find it. Find it. There is no, no specification about uh, uh, how you can reduce uh, fossil fuel things. It's very, very, very vague, very, very... So, the point is to, to not to say what would be well, but to see how, how the arguments go on and, 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 and what we can uh, remind of it or, or, or not. So I, I don't think that, you know, there, a, a book uh, I, I did not put on, on my slides, but I, I could have. Uh, um, there is a book uh, in French by uh, Ami Daon uh, about uh, climate governance. And you know it? No. It's a, and it's a, a big book uh, full of facts about how agreements were made and what was said and so on and so on. And uh, the, the Ami Daon and, uh, her, is her co-author. Uh, speak of uh, um, the sort of um, divide between what is agreed among international negotiation and reality. So the aim is to uh, make uh, international uh, language closer to what is happening. And if it was closer, it would be possible to, to speak of change of way of life. But as it is, it is not. OK, thank you. Yes, you. you. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I. I have some concerns about the human rights framework for yes. climate change. I want to share them with you and hear your thoughts on it. Uh, first, I think, well, the argumentation that led to that, to abandon the framework of common but differentiated responsibilities, like um, uh, we, we didn't know we were provoking an industrial revolution. It's just like, okay, you can kill people unintentionally, but you must pay for that as well, right? Like the effects are what count. Uh, even if we believed in that uh, line of thought, uh, there is also the differentiated capabilities of yes. countries, right? To face that, and those, and those differences were made through 
a very um, a very violent process of colonization and of the imbalances of geopolitical imbalances we have. And the human rights framework seems to me that we erase this past in a way and also we erase the fact that the countries do not have the same capability to respond to human rights uh, lawsuits, for instance. For, uh, and I don't think that the, all judiciaries could, I don't think that uh, each government could face climate change alone, even though uh, civil societies within those countries pressure them. And, uh, and I also think that it leads to, um, it, it leads to a way to maintain the imbalance because the North, um, let's see, we must, uh, uh, we must uh, slow consumption and slow energy consumption to reach uh, the mitigation goals we need, right? And mostly in the North. And that means lowering the standards of living, right? So, but by lowering the standards of living, of course, uh, people in the North can claim that it is uh, harming human rights here, right? So I think uh, that leads to, to a situation where the North, through the human rights framework, can maintain the standards of living that are causing the problem, you know? And, but in the South, uh, we are only going to continue the human rights harming we, we are um, uh, used to live in everyday lives in our democracies or our weak democracies in the South. So I wonder if you, you, if you have thought about it as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can try to, uh, to answer a very, very big and huge and important question. First, uh, about, um, is it, it is not capabilities, it is capacities, I think, the, the, the rewriting of the, the common but uh, differentiated uh, um, responsibility. You know, the, this, uh, this uh, idea of uh, differentiated capacities uh, came from, uh, as always, the, 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 the criticism of uh, charging more the, 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 the countries of, of the North. Because the idea was, the, the argument was, um, first, it was it it was our forefathers. It was not uh, us. And also, maybe those who were rich in the past, rich enough to 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 grow uh, to grow rich countries, maybe now they are poor. So you cannot ask a North country only because in the past they were with the Bolutar pay principle. You can ask only to those North country rich enough to pay. So you see, no. Uh, first thing, on the, on the, on the let's say, danger of uh, human uh, rights uh, framework, uh, the way it happens that uh, people of the North uh, if I right understood what you said, people of the North could argue that because they must uh, reduce their consumption, their rights are, 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 are harmed. Um, what can be said? Of course. Uh, but this is a reason why uh, Simon Kenney, uh, insisted upon that was basic human rights, not comfort human rights. So there is possibility of, 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 of arguing uh, on that. Uh, it was the Henry Shu made a, a similar uh, uh, distinction between, how did he call that? Between something like basic, also basic rights and, 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 uh, and luxurious rights. All rights 
to, to well-being are not the same. So it can be argued, but as you may know, uh, some people think that, uh, for instance, uh, prohibiting uh, uh, SUV in, 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 in the city is a threat for their most of their freedom. So you can argue that your freedom is threatened in, 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 in many ways. What the, 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 the point from, uh, from which I, I am speaking is what is happening? and how much uh, fighting for human rights is a good weapon in, in the hands of those who say it. And it seems, what, from what I know, that uh, in, in many uh, countries of the South, and uh, recently, uh, especially in Africa, uh, very grassroots movements take human rights as uh, as uh, as a weapon. So you, you see, you 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 can make a demonstration, you can make a march uh, 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 about health and about not uh, not dying from hunger or from disease. It's more difficult to, 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 to gather people on a demonstration about, we want to have the biggest car we can have. It's, it's more difficult, I think. So I think, of course, any, when you study the, this kind of thing, you see that anything may be, may be uh, reclaimed in another, in another way. What you said about the, the human rights fr framework and people uh, complaining that they, they live uh, not, so good, not so well that, that before. But uh, what is important is uh, this is why I, 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 I said that justice is not only a, a, a question of us thinking uh, what uh, just order, what a world order society should be, but also seeing, seeing how people uh, gather, how people uh, uh, unite themselves on, on what they think is unfair is unjust. And, and on this point, I think the, the fight for, for human rights is maybe a good one. I, I, just want to add, I, I just want to add one point um, about the, the, there is an answer to our, our forefather uh, did it and they didn't know, and now we, we inherit of what they, they did, but we cannot uh, uh, prohibit uh, them doing it. It's done. Uh, on the question of inheritance, anybody can reject an inheritance. You are not obliged to accept. An inheritance, an heritage. So, when you accept the heritage, you accept all what comes with the heritage, the good and the bad. And so, if we in the in the north we live not too bad because of of what our forefathers did, forefathers and foremothers. Uh, did it is because we we accepted the inheritance, so we accepted also what everything which comes with the inheritance. I think it's, a, it's the better uh, argument, it's the best argument. Uh, it doesn't mean that people are convinced. When 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 we when you begin to 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 argue in such kind of philosophy, there is no end to arguing. You can al always find another uh, argument. So uh, that is the reason why uh, 
people like uh, Henry Shu or Simon Kenney, Kenney who had very good arguments on, on, on historical responsibility shifted to, 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 other, to other kind of arguments. Yes? Uh, well, yes, I, I, I share most of these concerns on the human rights perspective, uh, but there's also one that I would like to mention uh, that is discursively or more, more, uh, more conceptually on the way of this uh, approach of the human rights, uh, because I, it's also applied on poverty, like in the UN agencies, like recently I think it's growing in many topics. And it feels sometimes to me when I read this stuff that it's, it's something that nobody can say I don't agree with this on the one hand, but on the other hand that it, it don't, it don't uh, expose the, ma the main tensions and contradictions for what this is not actually happening. You know? so I'm not sure I, I, I quite understand what you're saying. If, if when uh, when you were saying about the historical responsibility and the Kyoto, the it clearly very Washington consensus thing, but it also somehow puts on the table a, a problem of, uh, of interest, conflict, conflict um, of interest hmm. between different stakeholders. That, that is more clear. But I think when, when you bring, or the, the main question shifts into the human rights, somehow that conflict uh, occupies a second place while it, it would seem that the challenge is to get an agreement on the conflict, no? on the conflict of interest. The problem of what? And then the problem of financing, adaptation and mitigation yes. persists. Even though you can individualize responsibility or human rights responsibilities among states, the problem of financing and the mitigation persists. Yes, it's uh, the green fund. Yeah, but so we must know <laughs> how can we distribute the, the resources, the global resources for this mitigation. Like, um, is the North, uh, is the North um, willing to degrowth so the South can, can have a minimum infrastructure to attend basic human rights, because we may have a different idea of what basic means, and coming from uh, developing countries, I, I think we do. Uh, and also, uh, it's just like, um, yeah, who is going to pay the bill? Like, this, uh, this is uh, an issue, like we have a 0,7% uh, commitment with international cooperation that the develop the OECD countries should uh, should uh, commit each year to developing countries it was never never fulfilled and this is just the international cooperation uh, commitment so climate change like there are many uh, national uh, determined contributions that are attached to having international finance uh, in order to be in, ah, oh, we will fulfill these goals once we have the, the international funding. Yeah. So I think it's like we are engaging in a judiciary uh, snowball <laughs> and we are not uh, facing the challenge of, yeah, let's finance this, let's, let's uh, flow the resources. It's a follow up? It's a follow up? Okay, okay. It's the same, if it is the same question, uh, it's better I, I, I answer the, the, the three of you and, and not uh, each one. I, I was thinking in the same direction and for me really what's kind of a bit missing from the discussion is exactly this capitalist Jason W. Moore idea, the idea of also from Katharina Pistor of like the code of, uh, the code des Kapitals, like the code uh, of, yeah, sorry, pardon. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, all well. the more, all the more since you you speak with your mask. Um, so the the capitalist scene idea, looking at yeah. like the origins, who's polluting, mm, 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 mm. whose responsibility is it, and then linked to that, there's a recent book by Katharina Pistor about the code of capital, looking at laws and how they're linked to 
capitalist um, processes. And I was wondering on th those two things, because that's what we're talking about, power, power relations, relations of production and yes, so on. Yes, I, 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 I understand. Added to the question of degrowth, what you're thinking about that. <laughs> Of course, you can say that all this is a question of, of, of uh, capitalism, of relation of power, of uh, who is the, the strongest, and uh, uh, of imbalance of, of, uh, of power. Um, but what I think is that um, politics, is not only on, 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 on power relations. And that I think that justice is a very powerful idea. And I think that no solution will be uh, found uh, only on, 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 on uh, power relation. And that it's important that uh, people speak of justice and, and, and fight for justice. Uh, uh, my, my intention was not at all to tell you that what is, I don't know, but how was it thought, how was it elaborated, and what can we think of it? Because I think that people they mostly fight for justice. And, and if they are not convinced that it is about justice, they won't move. So I would say two, two things about, and then we, I will let you go, uh, two things about what, what, what I told you. Uh, first, the climate, climate justice ethics. Climate justice and ethics are very, very complicated issues. To the point that uh, Gardiner, uh, whom I, I quoted at the moment, um, spoke of what he called a perfect storm, uh, that they, 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 which is a, a, a word of complexity. But what he, he meant that it is so complicated, so complex, rather that uh, you can have a an, an seemingly very small argument and you have interest, and you disguised interest in more argument. Uh, uh, um, an example, when, when I think that what Bush, uh, the father, uh, said that uh, if China was not to, to, to sign the, 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 the agreement, the US will not sign the agreement. It was a, a, a perfect moral argument, equal treatment. But we very well know that he was only trying to find a way of, of, of preserving the, the U.S. interest and that uh, um, uh, the U.S. has, had, I know, the same Bush or the son, I don't remember, uh, had said that uh, uh, there is, no, there is no bargaining with the, the, the American way of life. So it's difficult when, when uh, arguments are used to, to, that they will not uh, be uh, recuperated or things like that. But, however, I do think that it's useful, it's important to speak on, 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 on uh, moral issues, all the more since uh, differently from uh, previous uh, fights, from economic or political fights, there is not a, 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 a visible majority to have common ideas. So I think that it's a reason why I, I, I insisted upon uh, uh, saying that uh, human rights was a, a good weapon for, 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 for activists. I think which is important is what is happening in, in, in the, the countries, in the 
at the basis. We, we, if, we, if we have a top-down way of seeing things, I think we, we will very quickly turn more or less cynical. There is nothing to do. And everybody does what he wants, or she wants. I think that it is by uh, being close and, 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 and studying closely was what people do and with what arguments they do it, that there can be some uh, progress is a great word, but things may be <laughs> less bad. <laughs> and what is, for me, what is, uh, uh, when, when you, you, you listen to activists in uh, South America, or in Africa, or in India, you see that they do not despise human rights. They, they think it, it can be very important to, 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 to fight on human rights. And, and this, this is from this point of view that I, I concluded that uh, uh, adding human rights to, to more technical uh, framework was important. Okay.